Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. It's a really hot and sunny afternoon here in Portland, Oregon. I have been taking a few moments to duck under the shade of my hazel tree and hide in between rounds of gardening. It's gonna be soon late enough in the afternoon that I'm gonna just need to step out of the sun altogether. But I made a video a little bit ago. I went out and did some mulching for a while and now I'm hiding in the shade again to kind of, kind of recover for a few minutes. I want to have a little bit of a rant Maybe, maybe even not a rant, maybe just express some concern and hopefully have a fruitful, uh, productive conversation about a post that came up on a page that I'm, I'm actually a really big fan of this group. This is called Leaf of Life and they're kind of documentarians looking at sustainable ways of living. And as somebody who lives in the city, even though I frequently have those fantasies of returning to a rural life, there were many things I loved about it, but for our family, it's best that we stay in the city. I'm really interested in urban, urban permaculture and urban sustainable design. So Leaf of Life had this post that was talking about uh, South Korea and its innovations to change their highway systems to be waterways, to be parkways to look at redesigning urban spaces for sustainability, retrofitting their urban spaces and rethinking the way traffic works, we, rethinking the way we move people around and how we use urban spaces and how can we create habitat in those spaces. That was a really lovely post. South Korea has done a tremendous amount to move towards sustainability. I feel like that is an area where I want to do more exploration about their urban design because they really are quite innovative in many ways there in ways that Americans would do well to follow, but we're not quite there yet here. One of the first comments on that post was something to the extent of, I'll cut and paste it in here. I can't exactly remember the wording, but it was like, but do they still eat dogs? So when I read that comment, my first reaction was just profound disappointment that that's where somebody went on that post. Anti-Asian sentiment, racism has no place in permaculture. I was aghast that somebody would say something like that on that thread and I made a comment to that extent like there's no room for racism here like please please don't do that and I was inundated with comments 100% of them from white men um, either American Australian or European who expressed um, that they were they were bad like how is this racism a completely disingenuous like oh I have no idea what you're talking about this can't be racism how is it racist to just be concerned that a culture eats dogs? So I looked up the stats on it and 3% of Koreans still consume dog meat as opposed to 3 point something percent of the Swiss, an equivalent amount. I don't see po people posting on um, memes or posts about Swiss agriculture. Well, um, are they still eating dogs? I was floored by how many horrible responses there were on this post. And you cannot convince me that it was anything other than anti-Asian hate. It was, um, it was so discouraging to see a corner of the internet that is interested in sustainable living, redesigning our communities to care for people and the planet, to be so full of such hateful rhetoric. Aside from just being straight up racist, the comments were deeply frustrating to me because we all have our individual food cultures, right? We're all from different communities of people. We all have rich traditional food cultures. And that means that our food cultures also have taboos. When we're looking at sustainable living, when we're looking at permaculture design, when we are looking at creating a planet that cares for all communities of people in a way that does not negatively impact the planet, we have to, much like we design our gardens to be site specific and our um, food production systems to look at the climate, to look at what grows well there, we need to look at the food culture as well and honor the food culture. Just because something is a taboo in your food culture does not mean that it is taboo in another food culture. For me as an American, um, we have a pretty strong cultural taboo against eating insects, against eating horses, against eating dogs. All kinds of cultures all over the world eat all of those groups of, of living things and have no problem with them. 
much as I've spoken out against vegan militant rhetoric in the past, I want to make it very clear that everybody's food choices are intensely personal and they're also intensely cultural. And we don't get anywhere in moving towards sustainability if we are going to judge, condemn, and other people, oh, it's real windy, other people based on their, judge, condemn, and other people based on their traditional food culture. Something may not sit well with you because you have been indoctrinated from a small age to think that that item is not proper food doesn't mean another culture has that same taboo as you. We're diverse people with diverse um, and rich cultural practices. And it does not look good to be the white American European weighing in with overarching judgment on somebody else's cultural practices. And even more than that, stereotypes of somebody else's cultural practices. Like, ugh, it's just, not, it's not a good look. I did notice that a lot of the people commenting had a particular, like I did a little click over to their profile and see what other kinds of things are you posting on social media. It was interesting to me that there's, there's a, a tie between the sort of far right wing rhetoric, kind of libertarian prepper rhetoric, who are a community of people who, again, I'm not going to call them, um, you know, like a, a monolith, but have a certain ideological bent, but also seem to be really interested in sustainable living and, um, and perhaps environmentalism. Where is the people care? Those kinds of um, xenophobic and racist comments and ideologies have no place in a sustainable world. They have no place in permaculture. If your initial reaction is to think something derisive and something belittling and besmirching somebody else's food culture, somebody else's cultural practices in general, I'd encourage you to sit and think about why that is. Why that is that you have such a strong reaction that a post discussing really effective urban design that actually moves an urban community towards sustainability, toward a resilient urban lifestyle, that your first thought is not any of the actual content of the post, any of the actual engineering, any of the actual implementation. Your first thought is a racist thought against Koreans. Like, ugh. Let's just kind of take the time and unpack all of our baggage from childhood when we approach other cultures. We wanna encourage other cultures and support them in their journey towards sustainability. We've got to sit with our own discomfort and we've got to process why it is that we think our culture does everything right and does everything best because we really, really don't. In fact, many other countries and cultures around the world are pushing toward people care, earth care, and fair share far better than the United States and far better than many European countries. So let's check our bias Let's spend some time really thinking if I embrace people care, what does that mean about how I think about other cultures, people in other cultures, how I engage in discourse on the internet, how I engage in my own heart and in my own mind when I think about other cultures, practice of sustainability. So thanks for letting me rant here for a moment. I hope that we can all Realize that we can have some level of discomfort with other people's traditional eating practices, traditional cultural practices, traditional dress, traditional housing, traditional way of living that may be different than ours. But we can still all work together to practice permaculture, to practice shifting our exploitive society into one that is resilient, into one that cares for all people, cares for the planet, and strives to do better. We all have that opportunity and we do not have to be homogenous in our opinions in order to come together and work toward those common goals. I'm going to head back out and do a tiny bit more gardening before the sun gets to me and then I'm probably going to do some sewing in the severe heat of the afternoon. Hope you are all staying cool and safe and I will be back soon for my permaculture garden. Please check out my Patreon down below in the meantime.